Mic check, mic check. What scan on YouTube? Okay, another one. Are you looking to move to Ho Chi Minh? Maybe you're wondering where you should live. How much are apartments? What about amenities and appliances? Today's video is about what sort of apartment can you get for $600 in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam? So first, I'm gonna show you my apartment. Then I'm gonna talk to you about why I like this space and also the area surrounding it. What are some of the things that can be improved? Finally, what to look out for when you're apartment hunting in Vietnam? Uh, okay, okay, okay. So I've lived in this area and this apartment for the last three months. If we take a look at the map, Ho Chi Minh has 19 different districts. District one, think about it as your central business district. Everything happens there, the most office buildings, restaurants, and nightlife. I live in a studio apartment in district four. That's a stone throw away from district one. All in all, I'm smack bang in the middle of the city. All right, without further ado, cue the film. The apartment montage. What do you guys think? It's all right, huh? My apartment's all right, isn't it? I think I got a bit lucky, but it's actually considered expensive in Vietnam. So let me tell you about why I like this space. Well, it's a studio apartment. Typically, I won't go for a studio apartment just because it feels like you're always stuck in the same room. Working, sleeping, eating, all in the same room. It's just not a good thing. You feel a bit claustrophobic in studio apartments. However, this space is relatively large. As you can see, there are different areas. We have the living area and the dining table, the bedroom. We have a separate desk area. It's spacious enough for what I need. It's around 65 square meters, so it's pretty big. Typically, you'll probably be paying a little bit more than that for this space. Also, I like the building because it's a small apartment. There's only around 11 rooms. That means that there's not a ton of people going in and out. You don't have to wait for the elevator. There's adequate parking spaces. You can just drive right in, plop your bike down. Typically, there's also security guards in most of these apartment buildings. I'm glad that we don't have one just because when you come in really late at night, they're sleeping. So you don't really want to wake someone up every time you're in and out and it's kind of bothersome. And to combat the need for a security guard, the landlord has implemented a fingerprint sensor, which is perfect. That means that there's no keys needed, not just for downstairs door, also the apartment door. It's all keypad access, keyless, yes. Technology, not carrying keys has been amazing. So that's why I like this apartment. What about the area? District four is very small and that's a good thing. It means that things are walking distance. I can literally walk a minute and I'll hit a convenience store and a bunch of coffee shops on the way and also food. The good thing about also living in district four is you're close to district seven if you want to get bomb ass korean food because i know you guys love your korean food you head to district seven i would prefer to live in district one but for that budget it's really hard to find a place that's suitable with everything that i have all right all right so let's talk about why I don't actually like the place. Well, say your friends are visiting or your family want to sleep over, that's actually pretty hard and there's not really any privacy apart from this little curtain. Being as District 4 and I live down a small street, it means that houses are very close together. So that means you can see your neighbors all the time. 
you look out the window two meters opposite you and you can actually see into their house which means they can see into your house so if you get into any naughty business close the blinds also you're so close the noise can filter through someone has a rooster who keeps roosters so that thing is going off at four in the morning and you're just there like can you just kill it and make some chicken? Get rid of that animal. Like any other place, you are at the mercy of your neighbor. And if one of them decides to adopt a hobby of singing karaoke very badly, you have to deal with that. Expats complaining about karaoke is such a normal thing in Vietnam. And I don't know what the love is for it in terms of blasting it, but that really happens. Apart from that, there's not actually much to not like about this place. So let's move on. So general advice on apartment hunting. You have to clarify what sort of apartment you want. Do you want a fully furnished, partly furnished service? And that's what I went for just because I'm a lazy prick. Then you have to think around the management fee. Usually that's not included in the rent. The management fee is really for the amenities of the building. Say you have a swimming pool or a gym. Is parking included? Another thing you need to be wary of is who your landlord is and how helpful are they? My landlord does this for a living, so it's not just a side hustle so he's got his processes down and everything is very very organized and transparent and also is you need to register as a foreigner every three months within the district you are in so you need to communicate to your landlord can you help me with this because it's obviously a lot easier for someone who's Vietnamese how noisy is your street at night versus in the daytime in the daytime everywhere is typically quite noisy but at night are there parties that the locals love to drink it up? These neighbors that I have here are pretty quiet. However, if I live a few blocks down the road, they are drinking it up every night. That's. If you want a further breakdown of what you should look out for when hunting an apartment, here is a list I made earlier. So check out the link below in the description. And I think the last tip is don't forget to negotiate, not just on the price of the apartment, but everything in between. Deposits, TVs, cleaning, everything like that, you should negotiate. Remember, it's just part of the culture and you should get the best deal available, especially now if you're renting an apartment, just because it's in the lockdown and you can probably get it cheaper but bear in mind most landlords are saying a six months renting period just because they think they'll get more as soon as the pandemic is over so likely the prices will increase all right and that's it this is the apartment tour this is the video smash all the buttons